Good afternoon, travelers. This is your captain speaking. We're going to be taking a short flight together. So they'll be closing the cabin door shortly, and you need to find your way to your seats and put on your seatbelts. There's a group of old codgers in the rows six, seven, and eight that have traveled together often. And uh, we are going to be taking this short flight and uh, celebrating Judy's life. Her destination is better than any she ever took as a flight attendant, um, better than uh, Honolulu or even Maui, because she's in the presence of our Savior. And uh, so we're going to celebrate her together today and uh, thank the Lord for her life. Shall we pray? Dear Jesus, we do pause before you in this place, and we thank you that uh, you are are and want to be part of our lives. I thank you that you had Judy in your hands and even in this last period of her life where she was dealing with health challenges. I thank you for those that love her most and best gathered around her to support her and encourage her as she got ready to see you face to face. Thank you for the assurance that we have as believers in Jesus Christ that she stepped from this life right into your presence and is more alive today than she's ever been. So I pray that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit and that this time that we share will draw us together to grieve and to comfort one another and to be filled with the hope that we have that we will see those we love again in your presence. And for that, we say thank you. So we praise you. We give ourselves to you and we thank you so much that you have given yourself for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me? We're going to sing a couple of verses of one of her favorite songs. ago I went to visit a lady in a retirement community and her husband had died and so I was asking her about him and I said tell me about your husband and she said he worked all his life and then he died I said really I'm waiting for some more you know and she says yep he worked all his life and then he died so I repeated I said so he worked all his life and then he died she said yeah he worked all his life and then he died 
That's all she ever said. And when I got home, I said to my wife and kids, have more to say than that. Right? Have something to say. And so I have some uh, uh, points from Rob, and I'm going to share those for him. In fact, Rob said, and we're not Catholic, but we're going to hear his confession. He said, I'm not brave enough to take the stage and talk about my mom for fear of crying and not making it through a speech. But isn't it a brave enough thing to admit that I'm not brave enough? Yes. He says, one of my first memories is when I was three or four years old, anxiously awaiting for her to return home from the airport, running to the door where, through a glass panel, I could see her keychain that said, I love bunnies on it. I don't know if that was actually referring to actual rabbits or if it was a nickname for one of her friends, Bonnie Hartman. Is Bonnie here? <laughs> there she is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then he entitled his other little memory here, Stopped Smoking for Children. When she was still a smoker, she and my dad went to the drive through at McDonald's. And while they pulled up to the window and waited, uh, an older woman, 60 to 70-year-old woman, passed by in front of them going to her car. The woman was smoking with one hand and carrying an oxygen tank behind her with the other. That's when mom decided that she didn't want any part of that being around her children. So thank you for those comments. And then now come on up, please, and share with us, Jim. I love you more. That was Judy's mantra. Whenever her boys or anybody would say, I love you, it was, I love you more. I'm sure lots of moms and dads, parents share that with their children too. Rob shared with me about a week ago that he said, whenever he would call from school and talk to his mom, he would tell her at the end, I love you, mom. And she'd always come back, I love you more. I've got my cliff notes. I've already used one of these, so bear with me. I'll get there with you. We took, uh, Judy and I used to go up to June Mountain to go skiing. She used to try to fool me into that she didn't know what she was doing. So we'd always take the bunny slopes. One day I was coming down a little bit ahead of her, and all of a sudden this skier came behind me right over the back of my skis. And I said, what the heck? And she turned around and said, what'd you do that for? I said, you just ran over the back of my skis. And all she was, just kept going and goes, I knew it was something like that. And she just disappeared. We met, can think about this, where young men come. They're always looking for good looking girls. And we had four firefighters that were coaching a bunch of beautiful flight attendants. You talk about something that guys is like, wow, this is great. Judy was a prom queen in high school. These are all prom queens. They're all, all candidates for them. Nice ladies, too. Great friends. They were called the firebirds of all things for both of us. When it came time that we decided we wanted to be married, we booked La Venta Inn in Paula's Verdes. And just like today, you have a three-hour window to beat. And you got to meet that three hour and then you're out. And we were getting ready to go to Hawaii for our honeymoon that night. Some of you were there and remember this well. My side of the family decided they were going to make it real special. So they got together, which sounded neat, and they leased an old two ducker English bus to come to the wedding from the San Fernando Valley. And I did say old bus. And it got to be the time for the ceremony to start, and my side of the family wasn't there yet. Almost an hour later, that bus finally got to the top of the hill. They even had to let some people out so it could get the rest of the way up. That was the first start of the day. It didn't end there either. It got more fun as the day went on. 
Judy was really giggling. <laughs> so we had the ceremony and a very rushed reception, but a good time, I think, was had by all. After we went to our friends, uh, Bob and Violet Stevenson's house in El Segundo, I think it took them probably two or three years to get rid of all the rest of the rice that was left behind, and then they took us to the airport. There was more to that story, too, because a lot of her friends bid special to be on the flight, the American flight, that was going to take us to Hawaii. So they were ready for us, and we got there in plenty of time. Problem was, the air traffic controllers were getting kind of rambunctious at that time, and President Reagan was getting ready to fire them all, so there was a big rush on the airline. But we got on the plane, we were in first class, all of Judy's friends, they brought us champagne, we were all set to go. And one of the agents came up and said, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to get off. What? We paid extra for these passes, these aren't free passes. I'm sorry, you have to go. All our friends were standing there with their mouths hanging open while we were escorted off the plane. And what do we do now? Judy was obviously in tears and our friend Mike took off. And he says, you follow me. And he got into one of the tunnels that connected American to United because he was already on the phone as soon as he was heard what's going on. So he was all ahead and Judy kept saying, this is ruined, everything's ruined. Everything will be fine and everything's ruined. And I said, well, yeah. no, everything will be fine. And when we got to the United desk, they already knew all of it was going on, and they heard what American did to their own employee. So they said, you come with us, and they put us in the upper deck on that plane. We were the only ones in the upper deck of that 747. Uh, we could hardly not walk off that plane. We almost had to be carried off. They took good, shit, good care of us. So that was great. And then we enjoyed our, our honeymoon by, on the seven-day cruise around the islands. Judy was a real, I call her, social animal. She loved being around her friends. She loved to have a good time. Anybody around Judy knew that. One of our friends, Billy Moore, who was also a social animal himself, nicknamed her Judy Loud Company. Because if you walked into a room where there was a party going on, you didn't have to look. You knew where Judy was, either there or there. You knew where she was, always having a good time with her friends. In her, uh, her illness was really hard. It was, may have been as hard on us, knowing how social she was, that she was slowly losing contact with everybody. She couldn't even speak to us. The last month and month and a half, it was a slow mum mumble is all she could get out when we had talked to her. And we'd have to get down real close to her to hear her. In the last couple weeks before she went home to be with the Lord, she couldn't and didn't speak at all. In about two days, we knew, we knew the end was coming, and about two days before she passed to go with the Lord, I had, in the evening, given her her medications, and I leaned over to her ear. And I said, I love you. And all of a sudden, she actually spoke and said, I love you more. Young Jim was standing behind me and I had to leave the room. It affected everybody. I could not believe that she was actually she said something. And those were the last words she ever spoke. I love you more. If Judy were here today, and her, her body is here, but she's with the Lord. She's got a new one. She'd want me to tell you that that's what Jesus told us and what he did for us. I love you more. And she wants everybody that she ever knew to see her again one day. 
with heaven, under Jesus, face to face. I want to thank everybody for coming to honor Jesus. Judy's memory today. I want you to know what she's saying to you. I love you more. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. I was going to be able to get through this without crying. <clears throat> well, Robbie, 21 years ago when my dad passed away, I thought that I could get up here and talk, and then I couldn't. But your dad graciously read the poem that I was able to read, so it's following suit that it's a family trait. <clears throat> um, when Jim asked me if I wanted to speak, of course, my first thought was, well, yes. And then I wanted to find out if my mom wanted to speak. And I asked her, and she goes, can you speak for me? And I said, no problem. And I'm thinking to myself, OK, I'll do another poem like I did last time. And at that moment, the refrain came into my head. And I'm like, OK, perfect. Um, it didn't turn into a poem. Um, but um, the refrain is still in it. So we're going to still go with that. <laughs> um, but like I said, I'm like, I was fine up until Jim got up here, and now I'm going, okay, let's see if I can get through this. So bear with me as well. Um, I do talk fast, and so hopefully uh, most of you will be able to understand me. And I'll put it down a little bit, just in case for those that are streaming so you can hear me too. And I'm almost hoping that they might be able to put subtitles up there for you. Okay. <laughs> So good day, everyone. I am blessed and honored and privileged to be standing up here today, representing my mother, Nancy Inskeep, as well as myself, and remembering the life of my aunt, Judith Ann Neiman and Ward, or as we all knew her as our Judy with an I. Talking with my mom, I asked her, what, what made Judy, and, and when did she change her name from the typical spelling of Judy with a Y to Judy with an I? She couldn't really remember the exact moment or what the situation was, but her summation was basically, perhaps in high school, to be unique. And I went, huh. Well, considering there isn't a Y in Judith, it made me think, well, yes, it may be a unique spelling to spell it with an I, but it also makes sense. So, unique but makes sense. That's kind of the theme with Judy, with our Judy with an I. <clears throat> Preparing to get up here to speak about Judy was quite interesting. Sharing different stories with the family and my mom and talking about memories and, and realizing that we had some of the different memories from the same experiences and it was kind of interesting. Um, but while honing in on what exactly we wanted to share to the, I'll give you the essence of Judy, uh, it made me think more about not only the 44 years that I got to have with her, but the events of the 74 years of life that she had. 74 years. Seems like a nice high number. But wow, wouldn't we have all loved a little bit more time with our duty with an eye? The pamphlet you were all given, if you read it, is a brief synopsis of our life. And it really is a brief synopsis because there is a lot to it. <laughs> but if you know our family well, and probably all of you have heard about him at least, our patriarch was Robert Neiman. <clears throat> He led this family to be who, what, who it is right now, who they are today. However, in retrospect, in all of my thinking, our lovely Judy pulled a lot more of those invisible strings with our family than we ever realized. <clears throat> I shall explain, a little, uh, uh, explain this with a little stroll down memory lane of our Judy with an eye. Let's go back to Judy, as Jim already talked about, the airline days. <clears throat> my grandfather may have persuaded her to choose American Airlines, but her being stationed over there in Buffalo, New York, where she was freezing, made her dream of California. <laughs> so she did everything in her power to get out here to California. And she did. She moved to California. But then all of a sudden, my grandparents pulled up roots on everything, and they moved out here to California. A couple years later, my mom comes out to California. And so it's thanks all to Judy that we're all here in California, thanks to our Judy with an eye. Jim was already talking about um, some of the stories that we've talked about. And uh, we, we've all heard the story now of how Judy and Jim met on, on the field. 
Um, they got married and they moved to, and they lived in Camarillo. But soon after living there um, came my cousins Rob and Jimmy, or sorry, Rob and Jim. I still call them Robbie and Jimmy, but I get that because I'm older than them. <clears throat> um, but Judy felt the draw to be closer to her parents. Um, and they lived in San Juan Capistrano. And Camarillo to San Juan Capistrano back then was like, it would have been better to take an airplane. Um, and so um, I always thought it was my grandpa that wanted her closer, but I think the feeling was pretty mutual. So of course, whatever Judy wanted, her father made sure that happened. And so um, another great migration happened. Judy and Jim moved into the house that my grandparents were living in. My grandparents moved into the house that we were living in, and then we somehow got moved into a house in San Clemente. The wards are still in the house that they moved into in Dana Point. We're still in the house that we were in in San Clemente. My grandparents moved many, 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 many times. I can't even count the number of times that they moved. But Judy and her sister, my mother, were done with moving. They stayed there, they made their family roots, and they've stayed there ever since. <clears throat> and making the, those houses their family's homes. But it all started with our Judy with an eye. <clears throat> Judy, uh, Jim kind of mentioned this a little bit. Um, Judy grew up Lutheran, Jim grew up Catholic. Similar, but very different religions. So they decided they were going to not be either one of those, and they basically began their spiritual journey together. In 1981, the year they got married, I started, ironically, at Capo Valley Christian Schools. As I recall at the time, I believe they were Baptist. That fit perfectly. It wasn't Catholic and it wasn't Lutheran. So six years later, when they moved back, when they moved into town, <clears throat> their relationship with CBC began. All three, of, all three of us cousins ended up going to school there. Um, Jim and Judy, um, Jim and Judy's spiritual growth grew there, and they were very involved with the church. They even roped me into several vacation Bible school events and some other things there, but I did enjoy it. After I graduated, my mom and Judy both ended up working at the library. <clears throat> some of that spiritual family from CBC is here today. They fully accepted our Judy with an eye. <clears throat> Growing up, <laughs> Whenever there was a project or a costume that needed to be made, <clears throat> pause. <laughs> I would always start with my grandma, but she would always go to Judy. Why? She had all the stuff. She had the creative brain to put everything together to make the perfect thing. <clears throat> that creativity led her to some flower arrangement classes at the local ROP in San Juan Capistrano. Her talent has probably been utilized, been seen by most of the people in this room with some sort of arrangement of flowers or something she's put together for you or something. Um, every time she would borrow my car, it would come back with glitter and petals. I never did quite understand that one. Um, ironically, decades later, I now work as an accountant with that ROP. <clears throat> when I was asked in my interview about eight months ago, I was asked if I had any experience with an ROP. I got a big old smile on my face. And I said, why, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. My family went there, and they used their adult education courses. They, that panel was very excited, because a lot of people don't even know what an ROP is. So I may have had a little bit of help from those invisible strings in landing my dream job because of our Judy with an eye. I. I had the unique privilege to be the only one that called call Judy aunt. <clears throat> Of course, that was also unique because I usually called her Auntie Judy. Why? Because it just made sense. <clears throat> Judy was very unique. But she also made sense. From the spelling of her name to arriving late to everything. <clears throat> As Jim already mentioned, we, already know she, we always knew when she arrived. For within moments, you would hear that unique hybrid cackle. And you would know she was there. Judy made everyone feel loved, and we all loved her. But we wouldn't all give to hear her laugh one more time from our unique, fabulous, amazing Judy with an eye. Thank you for listening and being here today to honor the memory of our Judy.
probably have a special memory that you'd like to share, and I have the microphone, I can bring it right to you. Or uh, there'll be a mic at the back as well, we can just get it into your hand. You can uh, either tell us something about her or something you want to thank the Lord for about her life. So, worked all his life and then he died. <laughs> Judy with an eye, I love you more. <sighs> Who would like to share? Yes, right there, Robert. Well, I met Judy at CBCS when Robbie was in my class, and he was just a little three-year-old at the time. And over the years, we became friends, and we traveled places together, and I got to be the recipient of being put in first class several times when I was going over to visit my daughter in Hawaii when she had her baby. And Judy would just hook it up. Even if she wasn't there, she would hook it up, and I would get to go in first class. So I just remember all the fun memories. We went on cruises and got together with friends going out to the desert, and she will definitely be missed. Thank you. My name is Michelle Sandberg, and I met Judy um, probably around the same time Noni did because my son Zach and Robbie were in the same preschool class. And we developed a friendship at that point, and I and we raised our kids together. Spent a lot of time in Bible studies and at parks and at the beaches, etc. So I have a lot of um, special memories. One of my funnest memories was that Judy and I and one of our other church friends, Elaine, decided we were going to take a sign language class. And I tell you, that was something. Thank God it was only a pass fail class because I think we definitely would have had. A, D minuses, <laughs> but all we had to do was to sign a Christmas carol to get a passing grade, and so we spent many, many hours trying to learn O Come All Ye Faithful, and somewhere we have that on video, because I remember that somebody, vid we were videotaping each other, but we managed to get through it after a lot of laughter, and we passed the class, um, so that was one of my funnest memories with Judy. I think I would have gone for, we wish you a Merry Christmas, you know, something that repeats the words over and over and over. <laughs> you, most of you probably know the story, but in 2013, the, as the, the church in uh, San Juan called us here and said, we want to join you. I said, what are you talking about? They said, we want to join, let's get the two churches married. We want to give you our people, our problems, our property, our books, our budget, everything. Let's just, <laughs> let's just throw these in together. Okay, I thought that one was on too. I can take this one off. And so uh, that's what we did. And uh, we said we were going into construction here. And they said, well, you could come over to, to, to San Juan. We could all meet there together, which we did from 2017 to 2020. And then as we were leaving, the school said, you know, this has been our home. Would you ever sell us this campus to, to be for the school? So we gathered the 40 people together that had, had called us to talk about merging. We said, what do you think of that idea? They said, you know, we had a great church, and it started a ministry to a school, and this campus looks like a school, and it's a horrible place for church. It's down here in a hole. People can't find it. We should, we should sell this to the school, bless the school, and then plant some churches other places that are growing. I thought, that is pretty mature. So that's what we did. It's kind of like selling your car to your kid, uh, you know, where you, you seriously discount it and uh, have it continue to be used for the glory of God. So anyway, that's a little bit of the story of how the two churches have intertwined. And uh, so if you're here on a Sunday, um, all, all the people that had been part of that when we, the two of us joined in 2013, uh, those that still remain are, are here uh, on Sundays and uh, serve in the Lord. Somebody else have a memory to share? Yes. This, hello. <laughs> anyway, all of us are, were flight attendants for many years together. We flew Hawaii. And Raise your hands. Who's the flight attendant? Yes. Many, many, many fond memories. Most we can't discuss, but anyway. <laughs> but we always loved Judy. She was like the belle of the ball all the time and always made us so happy. We really cherish our memories with her. Well, thank you. I hope you all get a picture, you know, of all yeah. the flight attendants. We've got tons of pictures. I'll say a few words. Okay. I'm not, I'm Bonnie Hartman, and I don't speak in front of, you know, people, large groups. <laughs> oh, that's even worse. 
anyway, Judy and I go way back, way back. We considered ourselves sisters because my maiden name was Inskeep. <laughs> and who has that name, first of all? I mean, it, <laughs> apparently, few of us, okay. But anyway, I was busy in the 70s having my three children, and then I think we actually got together flying mostly to Hawaii. And I can remember my supervisor saying, you don't want, you just had a baby, you don't want to go to Hawaii and be, you know, gone for, I go, oh, yes, I do. <laughs> three kids, yeah. But we did a lot of things together. And so since I had all the experience with kids and she always thought I was in there, I was in the room taking pictures of Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't with Jimmy because I was going to my daughter's Girl Scout camp and I was one of the counselors there, so. Sorry, Jimmy, I missed your birth. <laughs> but we had lots of pictures. But anyway, we go way back, had a great time. Like June said, sometimes too much fun. <laughs> Stories we can't, well, can't remember, basically, at this age. <laughs> Don't have to worry about sharing them. But Judy, we'll miss ya, love ya, more. Thank you. I'll be brave. <laughs> Judy um, was part of Firebirds, and so were a few of us. And it was a really special group right, of ladies. Of <laughs> and Jim was our coach. What position did you play? Outfield. Okay. Yeah, they always had me on the left out in the bench. <laughs> <laughs> and my husband was also a coach, because all four of our coaches were firefighters. So. They had a lot in common, and we had a lot in common, and it was a great mix. And the memories that we have from that time of traveling, playing games all over the country, and sharing in the intimacy that you share when you have a friend like that um, was really very special. As flight attendants, you have that, and as firefighters, you have that as well. It's almost like a family. And the team, and you might not see a flight attendant for five years because they're flying something else. But as a team, we held it together, I think, 10 years, maybe even 11. And um, you become very close through that time. So I feel that we we're all very blessed. And Judy was a part of that with that smile of hers, that beautiful smile. So, um, and her wonderful, contagious personality. So thank you, Jim, for all those years. And thank you, Judy. <laughs> thank you. And I appreciate y'all being here. I got to be a flight attendant for about this, this long. I was, in, I was an Air Force Reserve chaplain, so I'd fly in uniform. And somebody was having a stroke or something halfway back. And so Mother Superior, who was near the front, said, I got to go back there. You stand here. Don't let anybody get up and go to the bathroom. And of course, as soon as she walked down the aisle, the lady right over here said, I got to go. I got to go. I said, nope. I'm gonna, I'm, my job is to stand here and not let anybody come up here. So it's a hard job that you all did, and, and uh, she did it with grace and fun. Well, let's see some of the pictures. Did somebody else raise their hand over here? I didn't want to rush you. Oh, Beth? It's been fun listening to the other parts of Judy's life that we weren't so much aware of, and, but in the last 15 between 15 and 20 years, it's been a joy to know Judy and Jim through Hope for Today Ministry and uh, her desire to want to share in having a servant heart at our conferences and always cheery and always a good support of Jim as he was to her. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll have time at the reception as well to share your uh, personal private stories uh, with the family. Let's go ahead and see her life in pictures.
beautiful. A couple of years ago, a man called. He said, my wife's been in bed. I don't even know that she's conscious. She hasn't opened her eyes for three days. Would you please come pray with her? Very similar to your situation. I get there. She's right up the middle of a king-sized bed. He walks me and he goes on this side. I go on that side. I actually think she's already passed away. And so I get real close just to see if she's still breathing because it seems like nothing's happening. My face is about 12 inches from hers when she pops her eyes open and she says, I love you. <laughs> I go, ah! <laughs> it's, it's kind of a shock, you know, when somebody's saying, I love you. And uh, I didn't think we knew each other that well, but, you know, we're here at church together and, and uh, praising the Lord. And uh, she just wanted to express that. So put the effort into saying something, even though she wasn't talking and she went on to be with the Lord later that week. But, uh, you know, Jesus says that to you and to me. And um, he, he said that to, to Judy at some point in her life, and she heard that, and she responded to it. And, of course, she had a problem that she couldn't solve. And I'm not talking about her disease. You have the same problem. The body that you and I live in is not designed to live forever, and it won't. And 100% of people who are born eventually die. And so to put all of your effort into how is, what's life going to be like here is short-term thinking because you're, you're going to live forever. And Jesus offers a way for us to be right with God. He said, I stand at the door and I knock. If you open the door, I'll come in. He's going to be gracious. He's not going to shove his way into your life. He's not going to insist that you invite him in. But if you do invite him in, he says, we'll share a meal together. We'll have conversation. We'll begin a friendship. I can forgive uh, all your sin and uh, get you right with God and set you on a life that's filled with purpose and have a place for you in heaven when you pass away. And uh, so I guess I'm encouraging you, if you've, never, if you've never listened seriously to the invite of Jesus, he wouldn't just say, I love you more. He would say, I love you most, because he did, because he paid with his own life so that you could be made right with God, and he really wants you in heaven, along with all those who've loved him, including Judy. So we wish she had lived here a lot longer, 74 years, I don't know, it doesn't seem all that old anymore, and... And uh, yet, if she had lived twice that long, it's a snap of the fingers compared to the length of eternity that we're going to be together in heaven. And Judy would want you there. Shall we pray? Dear God, thank you for Judy. Thank you that she lived out what you told us in your word to do, to love one another and to be known by our love. She was known by her laughter and by living life to the fullest. And so we thank you for her life and for that example and that she blessed each one of us. I thank you that she rests in peace now because she rests in you. And I pray for each person here. If they've never seriously considered your invitation to open the door of their heart, to let you forgive their sin, to let you come alive in them and to invite them into heaven. I pray that today's the day, using Judy as an example. I thank you that we can lean on you and that you will carry us home. So we thank you for Judy, for the life that she lived, for her loves, and I pray that you will bless us, bless them, bless us, each one. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's stand together and sing one of her other favorites, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Secure from 
on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leading on the everlasting bless you each one and thank you for being here let's give the family just a chance to get out first out by the flagpole where they can greet you or on even into the ocean room we call it in this building next door and there's some refreshment over there for you god bless you go in peace mm -hmm.